Hello dear students you might have got an idea insects as i said they are both beneficial and harmful to human mankind what do you mean by bilaterally symmetrical animals each uh, phyla has a different characteristic feature combination that is a suite of a flower called nectar students welcome back to session 8 of this chapter called animal kingdom already we know that there are around 9 invertebrate phyla and in the last session we studied about a very important phyla called phylum annelida what are we going to study in this session that is session of this very important uh, phyla that is phylum arthropoda as soon as you see this beautiful pictures you might have got an idea what are we going to study about in this session we are going to study about insects that is insects belong to which phyla called phylum arthropoda so to in today's session i'll be starting with a very very interesting and a very important phyla which is usually asked in the examination that is about phylum arthropoda you might have come across maximum number of organisms that we come across on this planet earth is the insects a very important characteristic and i think all of you know the study of insects is called entomology here you can see the praying mantis grasshopper right cockroach you can see the honey bee ant etc etc so the study of uh, insects is called entomology hope you remember insects play a very great role uh, and there is a very important coevolution between the flowers and the pollinators who are the pollinators it is the insects the, the insects are the ones which bring about a very very important phenomenon in plants called pollination as you know the flowers are stationary so the in insects will bring about a very important uh, uh, event that is called pollination so insects have a great role to play now let us study about this very important phylum called phylum arthropoda in detail like this is the first largest phyla of the animal kingdom what is it this is the first largest phyla of the animal kingdom what do you mean by that that maximum number of animals what do you come across on this beautiful planet earth are the arthropods you may wonder why particularly these group of animals are found in larger number because they can survive in any type of habitat may it be aquatic terrestrial aerial so they have a better body organized uh, they have a better adapted adaptive features to adapt to various modes of uh, habitats right and that is also the reason why you come across they are found in large number right so phylum arthropoda is the first largest phyla of the animal kingdom whereas the second largest phyla is about the mollusk which i am going to explain in the coming session right so uh, arthropoda is the first largest phyla of the animal kingdom where you come across the more number of organism and particularly class insecta that belongs to phylum arthropoda is the largest class as i said the most of the organisms that we come across on this planet earth are the insects and study of insects is called as what entomology insects are both beneficial to harm human mankind as well as harmful to human mankind you might have come across how are they useful to human mankind they bring about the process of pollination how are they harmful to human mankind i think all of you know that most of the insects are pests as i said the insects are both beneficial and harmful to human mankind how are they beneficial to human mankind as i said they are very good pollinators you know they visit a flower until and unless they are rewarded for it they don't visit a flower and i think all of you know that the flowers are brightly colored why are they brightly colored and they are also they 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 are they have a sweet smell that is sweet scent and that is all to attract the insects for pollination and how are they harmful as i said most of the insects are pests and these pests are going to destroy the 
food crops and definitely they are going to become a menace to the farmers right so as i said the phylum arthropoda is the first largest phyla of the animal kingdom hope you remember in the last session i said phylum annelida why how did the name annelida come because they had the body had circular rings called annuli right in the same way how did this phylum phylum arthropoda get its name so when you split the word called arthros means joint poda means what foot they are joint leg jointed legged animals they are jointed legged animals they are jointed legged animals they are jointed legged animals hence the name arthropoda poda means what foot arthro means what jointed usually you come across see they have all jointed legs here right and these legs are modified in many a ways sometimes it may be modified into antennae maybe sometimes it is modified into reproductive organ in various ways it has been modified right now let us start with the characteristic features one by one as i said phylum arthropoda is the first largest phyla of the animal kingdom and class insecta is the first largest class of phylum arthropoda which includes insects and why are they called as arthropods because they have jointed legged joint legs hence the name arthropoda moving on to the very important characteristic feature already i said this is the largest phylum in the animal kingdom why they are largest phylum because you find more number of organisms belonging to phylum arthropoda on this planet earth hence the name largest phylum of the animal kingdom and they are cosmopolitan in distribution found everywhere hence that is why we find everywhere this arthropods where don't we find this right so they are found in aquatic water terrestrial and aerial habitat uh, you might have come across insects flying in air so why they are cosmopolitan in distribute distributed everywhere either maybe in uh, aquatic terrestrial and aerial habitats and the body is divisible into head thorax and abdomen here you can see head thorax and abdomen the body is divided into head thorax and abdomen so here you can see the body is divisible into head thorax and abdomen and in some cases like arthropod like cockroach some of the body segments would have fuse and here you can see the process of formation of head very distinct head that is cephalization hope you remember cephalization also was one very important uh, basis for classifying the animal so from here also you can see the process of formation of head so some of the body segments fuse with the head and that is called cephalothorax so in some cases head is joined with the thoracic region hence it is called cephalothorax sometimes the thorax thoracic region fuses with the head region hence it is called as cephalothorax so what is the very important characteristic feature it is the largest phylum in the animal kingdom and they are cosmopolitan in distribution they are found in aquatic terrestrial and aerial habitats and the body is divisible into head thorax and abdomen and in some cases the head is joined with the thorax or the thoracic region is fused with the head region to form a cephalo thorax and as i said uh, why they are found everywhere because they are better adapted to various modes of habitat because they have a better adaptive feature so the survival rate is very very more in case of these arthropods so let us study about some more very important characteristic features of this very important phyla hope you can see this how beautiful this picture is right insects as i said they are both beneficial and harmful to human mankind moving on to the next very important characteristic features that is they have organ system grade of body organization as we have already started uh, uh, seeing a better body organization from phylum annelida so also as i said even this phylum arthropoda has a organ system grade of organization and the body is covered by a chitinous exoskeleton very very important as you know these uh, animals 
particularly are exposed to environmental conditions so what is the means for protecting themselves from the environmental conditions may it be uh, temperature may it be cold etc etc and that is that protection is provided by an exoskeleton what do you mean by exoskeleton the skeletal structure that is found outside the body is called as exoskeleton what do you mean by endoskeleton like for example in human body we have a skeletal system made up of bones so it is called endoskeleton skeletal system that is found inside the body is called as endoskeleton the skeletal structure that is found outside the body is called as exoskeleton so in these animals you come across what do we call it as chitinous exoskeleton what do you mean by chitinous it is made up of a chemical substance called chitin which is nothing but a carbohydrate called polysaccharide and this hard structure called this is hard structure this provides what protection and sometimes you can come across uh, this a uh, chitinous exoskeleton is shed off periodically with the development of the exoskeleton hope you might have come across like the snakes shed off their skin so it is called as molting or ecdysis so in a similar way here also the exoskeleton is shed off at frequent intervals and that process or that phenomenon of shedding off the exoskeleton at frequent intervals is called ecdysis or it is otherwise called molting it is called ecdysis or molting so this is also a very important point to be noted so what is a very important point here so they have what organ system grade of body organization and the body is covered by what chitinous exoskeleton and what is the function of this uh, chitinous exoskeleton protection protection of the body from the external environmental conditions and sometimes this uh, chitinous exoskeleton is shed off periodically uh, from time to time and uh, that phenomenon is called as what ecdysis or molting so all these are some of the very important characteristic features of uh, phylum arthropoda moving on to the next very important characteristic features here also you can see this beetle this is called beetle right see how beautiful this uh, insect is right so next very important character they are bilaterally symmetrical animals what do you mean by bilaterally symmetrical animals you can cut the body of these animals into two equal halves in one plane one direction plane means here it means direction next they are triploblastic animals what do you mean by triploblastic animals that is the body wall is divided into that is the body wall is made up of three germinal layers what are the three germinal layers outer ectoderm inner endoderm and middle mesoderm hence the name hence if they are called as what triploblastic diploblastic means this mesoderm will not be there but a non cellular layer called mesoglia will be present right so like nemath helm they were diploblastic animals platy helm is triploblastic and so if at all there is all the three layers formed it is called triploblast so these are triploblastic animals and these are true coelomates already i explained in the last phylum phylum annelida that is they are true coelomates eucelom means means what the coelom is lined by a germinal layer that is the coelom is lined by what mesoderm hence they are called as coelomates so again a very very important characteristic feature here you can see circulation is open type in annelida it was closed type now what is the difference between the circulatory system called open type and closed type in open type of uh, circulatory system there is absence of blood vessels so the blood is pumped by the heart and the cells and the tissues are directly bathed into it but in case of annelida it was closed type of circulatory system here it is open type of circulatory system where very very important thing is here you can see where the white blood is called hemolymph all of you might have come across cockroach i think all of you know cockroach is a nocturnal animal and it is a cursorial animal it runs very fast and you know it is a cosmopolitan feeder feeds on almost all types of food it doesn't leave even the paper clothes food items 
right so it is a cosmopolitan feeder and it has a special uh, mouth parts because and you know it has a hepatic ck which produces digestive enzymes which can digest any type of food that it eats so it is a very very unique animal that is what uh, that is the reason why type study of cockroach is introduced into the first puc biology syllabus right now as i said the the cockroach blood is white in color why our blood is red in color because of rbc and hemoglobin here the the circulation is open type where the white blood hemolymph flows within the body cavity called hemocele coelom filled with hemolymph is called hemocele hemolymph means what white blood without what without rbc right next very important point to be learned the very important characteristic feature of phylum arthropoda as i said this phylum itself is very very important from examination point of view so usually they ask uh, what are describe the characteristic features of phylum arthropoda with the suitable example so minimum if it is for 3 marks uh, you have minimum 8 to 10 characteristic features has to be explained along with suitable examples examples are very very important you describe the whole characteristic features but you don't but you forget to write the examples then definitely they are going to cut the marks so write the relevant examples that belongs to that particular phyla so you would have learned good number of examples can't you all remember one or two example then write that particular example don't mix the examples right from that phyla don't bring that those examples to another phyla for that as i said constant reading is very very important practice makes man what perfect keep reading then you see why you will forget as i said and i as i said anything should be learned with interest not forcibly so wherever you have interest uh, and interest cannot be created it has to come within and you cannot buy interest also in a shop so interest has to be brought within oneself and that interest will definitely carry you forward right so as i said circulation is open type where the white blood called hemolymph flows within the body cavity and what is the body cavity here it is called hemocele hope you understand uh, understood the very important characters feature moving on to the next very important character respiration so the exchange of gases there are different types of respiratory structures found in these animals for example like book lungs book lungs are the respiratory structures found in scorpion then like book lungs then gills you know prawns prawns are the aquatic animals right so obviously what will they have as organs of respiration they'll have gills as organs of respiration and most of the insects are terrestrial so they will have what trachea they will have trachea as organs of respiration so the respiratory structure varies from an organ from an insect to insect or from an organism to organ so what are the organs of respiration you come across the organs of respiration takes place by means of gills in case of prawn book lungs in case of scorpion i think all of you know scorpion is a very de poisonous animal and the la- the tail has a sting last sting which is uh, having a poison gland so when it bites definitely it is going to release what the poison sometimes some scorpions are so very dangerous it may prove fatal for the human body so it is very very a uh, dangerous animal so this also has jointed leg and this animal also belongs to phylum arthropoda so prawn then scorpion and many insects like butterfly the right uh, butterfly bee honey bees the moth all these are different types of insects you come across then uh, what is that cockroach and all these are uh, different types of insects then very very important excretion takes place by very very minute uh, thread like structures called malpighian tubules like we are those were the days where uh, uh, dissection of cockroach was included in the syllabus now we don't have this uh, dissection of cockroach so when you cut open the body of a cockroach and when you uh, start uh, uh, exposing the dyes to system there you come across uh, in the mid gut there are thread like yellow thread like structures called malpighian tubules and these malpighian tubules are nothing but the organs of excretion in in, in most of the organisms belonging to phyla arthropoda and particularly when you can come across in uh, cockroach right then excretion takes place by means of malpighian tubules so these are some of the very important uh, characteristic features of phylum arthropoda so what is it they are bilaterally symmetrical animals they are triploblastic animals 
they are eucilomates circulation very very important point to be learned why because it is something totally different uh, characteristic feature which you have not found in the other organisms so far right which you have studied so far like circulation is open type where the white blood why it is white and what do you call that white blood as hemolymph why it is white in color it is devoid of rbc is not having rbc and with hemoglobin then flows within the body what is the body cavity in case of these arthropods called hemocyl and respiration is of different types because as you come across different as i said these are successful survivors in almost all types of habitat may it be aquatic terrestrial or aerial so you come across these are cosmopolitan uh, in distribution you find everywhere almost in all types of habitats so obviously uh, for those animals which are in uh, water they have gills as organs of respiration for example the prawn then scorpion is what it's a animal which is found inside the soil or maybe and this will have a what book lungs and insects will have trachea as organs of uh, respiration then excretion takes place by means of what minute thread like structures called malpighian tubules so when you uh, re, uh, so you come across like this in the mid gut so when you release this so this is the digestive system here you can come across these are malpighian tubules what are these these are nothing but organs of excretion in case of these animals hope you have understood the very important characteristic features of phylum arthropoda moving on to the next very important characteristic features see how beautiful these insects are right next so the digestive system is complete with having both mouth and anus at opposite ends of the body digestion is intracellular again hope you remember digestion is of two types intracellular and extracellular if the process of digestion takes place within the cell inside the cell it is called intracellular and if it takes place outside the cell it is called extracellular so here the digestion is intracellular this is also a very important point to be uh, noted or to be written for phylum arthropoda as i said each uh, phyla has a different characteristic features so each character is very important for that particular phylum so digestive system is complete with having both mouth and anus at opposite ends of the body and digestion is intracellular and hope you know organisms may be oviparous viviparous and ovo viviparous how do we group the animals into oviparous viviparous and ovo viviparous oviparous are animals those which lay eggs egg laying animals are called oviparous animals which give birth to young ones which give birth to young ones are called viviparous what do you mean by ovo viviparous both like echidna platypus right they are called ovo viviparous sometimes they lay eggs sometimes they give birth to young ones but what about these arthropods they are mostly oviparous that means they are egg laying they lay eggs then nervous system how is the nervous system as i said these animals you have studied the first very important characteristic feature they exhibit what uh, level of body organization organ system grade of body organization so nervous system consists of what cerebral ganglia ganglia means what aggregation of nerves collection of nerves is called as ganglia so nervous system consists of a pair of cerebral ganglia or the brain and a pair of ventral uh, nerve cord which base segmental ganglia same like this this is called ganglia these are called nerves so each segment has like this and this is the so ventral two nerve cords two nerve cords these are called nerve cords and this is called ganglia ganglion or ganglia right so nerve cord this is the brain that is the cerebral ganglia or the brain right next sexes are separate that is dioecious for example like cockroach you can easily differentiate the male cockroach from the female cockroach or sometime that is unisexual 
and fertilization is what internal the process of fusion of the gametes will take place inside the body and the development may be direct or indirect so as i have already explained in the previous session that is the development may be direct or indirect so what do you mean by direct or indirect that is sexes are separate sexes are separate dioecious fertilization is internal the process of fusion of the gametes takes place inside the body not outside the body like frog a uh, female frog uh, that is the female frog goes to the water to lay eggs and the male frog sheds the sperms on the eggs and the medium is water so the process of fusion of the gametes happens outside the body of an animal that is in an external medium like water it is called external fertilization but here usually we find that the fertilization is internal and the development is either direct or indirect what do you mean by direct or indirect it may include a larval stage in the life history or it may not include a larval stage in the life history hope all these are the very very important characteristic features of the phylum arthropoda as i said this phylum arthropoda is very very important for study from examination point of view as most of the papers question papers they have asked this phylum arthropoda so make it a point uh, not to miss out this phylum to uh, while learning because this is a, the characteristic features are also so very quite interesting and different from the other characteristic features of other phyla and as i said this is the first largest phyla of the animal kingdom so definitely uh, the uh, the points will be something different when compared to the other phyla phyla as you have already come across the characteristic features hope you have understood all the uh, so what are the examples you can give for jointed legged animals prawns then scorpion insects means all types of insects then cockroach etc etc all these are the different examples which you can give for phylum arthropoda let us study some of the examples who has not seen an honey bee apis the scientific name is apis and nowadays many a farmers and many a people have taken up uh, rearing of honey bees for the bio, very important product called honey and for the bee wax which is having lot of economic value in the market which is commonly used for making of cosmetics and also for making of polishes different types of polish may it be like car polish etc so apis honey bee and not only that you know it's a very good pollinator how are the flowers pollinated as you know flowers are stationary so the gametes cannot the, the very important uh, event has to happen that is fertilization for that event to happen the two gametes should be brought closer to each other and what is that mechanism or that process which brings about the two gametes together that is through pollination and very good pollinator is apis that is honey bee and which visits a flower what for so what is the reward it is going to get when unknowingly when it is doing pollination that is the sweet of a flower called nectar then bombyx mori silk worm who does not know about the silk cloth so bombyx mori is the silk moth um, you know it's a very it's ha silk is having lot of economic value in the market and almost silk value is equal to gold value so and i think in mysore we know uh, rearing of uh, silk worm is a very uh, it's a occupation of many a people in and around mysore because uh, you know mysore is very may very much famous for mysore silk so bombyx mori lassi for lac in which is again a pest and there's one more called peripetus and you know this peripetus is a it is a connecting link between annelids and arthropods this peripetus will have both it is going to exhibit both the features of the arthropod and the annelid so hence we call it as what it is a connecting link between the annelids and the arthropods prawn i think many many of people you know prawn has become a very common and a very uh, famous seafood also right crab crustacean right even crab also is a very famous food then centipede and millipede compared to millipede centipede is quite dangerous even it is also having what poison gland then cockroach all of us know cockroach is a household pest 
and it is very difficult for us to get rid of cockroaches so we use many a mechanism to get rid of this cockroach because it's a cockroach is a household pest which feeds on almost all types of food it never leaves food uh, nor the um, uh, clothes nor nor paper etc etc then scorpion already i told you then limulus which is called horseshoe crab the or it is also called king crab which is a living fossil all these are the very important examples of phylum arthropoda arthropoda means what or arthro means what jointed poda means what legged legs so jointed legged animals here you can see in this beautiful picture right in this beautiful video you can see all the different types of uh, animals or insects that belong to phylum arthropoda hope you have understood this very interesting uh, phylum called phylum arthropoda so the characteristic features of phylum arthropoda are quite interesting and almost quite different from the other phyla so as i said this is the first largest phyla of the animal kingdom and in the coming session we'll be moving on to the second largest phyla of the animal kingdom that is mollusca right hope you have understood all this uh, phyla as i said all these phyla are very very important from examination point of view and also quite interesting as i said biology itself is an interesting subject with full of animals plants etc etc right it, it is something like a living subject right lively subject the very word itself will tell you biology means what study of living organisms so i'll be back in the coming session with one more phyla a very interesting phyla with suitable examples so till then goodbye and thank you